What's good, YouTube? It's Aquarius Leviathan Prophecy, and um, <clears throat> I just wanted to talk about a, you know, a subject um, pertaining uh, to WWE. Um, you know, uh, I've been a WWE fan since um, since probably the '90s. You know, what I'm saying, um, I just. I just think that, you know, I just think that wrestling back then, uh, it had everything, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, it had the matches, um, you know, somewhat, you know, I'm not going to lie, all the matches wasn't A star, um, you know, all the matches wasn't A star, um, some of them were, you know, some of them were, as you can see, I was somewhere in my, you know, uh, 2000, I'll probably say 2004 WWE Champion. Because uh, this, this belt right here, as you can see, this belt right here was kind of, you know, like mid to late 2000s, you know what I'm saying? JBL had it for the longest, and then Chris Benoit had it. No, Eddie Guerrero had it, and then John Cena had it, and then obviously that's when, you know, he transformed it to the spinning belt that we all know. Uh, you know, in the video game, you can actually spin the, uh, the belt around if you hold uh, R2 uh, on, um, on one of the video games. But... Um, yeah, man. I mean, I think it just lack. Uh, I think it just lack its touch, and um, you know, I just think, you know, uh, there's no creativity anymore. Um, the matches are boring. The superstars have no control over their gimmicks. Uh, the gimmicks are not even that good. Um, you probably have like one superstar on each brand, you know what I'm saying? Uh you know, you have, you know, um you have Roman Reigns, obviously. Um you have um you have um Drew McIntyre, uh you know what I'm saying? Like probably those are the only two superstars. You know, I'm not counting the vets, it's just superstars, you know what I'm saying? Like you know, um, the promos, they're not really as good as it was back then. You know what I'm saying? Back then, you, you, you mean, The Undertaker had very good mic skills. Chris Jericho had good mic skills. Stone Cone had somewhat good mic skills. The Rock had good mic skills. Uh, who else? Who also had good mic skills uh, besides Vince McMahon? Uh, Triple H had very good mic skills. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I think if you were to you know, put each roster head to head, it wouldn't even be, it wouldn't even be, um, a, a matchup, to be honest with you, you know what I'm saying, like, if you would've, if you would've took, uh, Stone Cone in his prime, and The Rock in his prime, and The Undertaker in his prime, and Kane with the mask on in his prime, and The Big Show, when he was just a, a giant of a man, uh, you know, you, you add DX, you add Dudley Boys, you add Edge and Christian, you add the Hardy Boys. You know what I'm saying? Those were great days, you know what I'm saying? And they had a lot of tag teams. You know what I'm saying? They had Hardcore Holly and Crash Holly. They had uh, Al Snow and uh, and Blackman. Uh, they had the Rock and Sock Connection. They had the Brothers of Destruction. You know what I'm saying? They had Triple H and Stone Cone. So... The Attitude Era is the pinnacle of what wrestling stood for, you know what I'm saying? And then you had the golden age where, you know, you had Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant and Macho Man and Ultimate Warrior, you know what I'm saying? And those dudes, you know what I'm saying? Those dudes paved the way for, you know, peop for, for the wrestlers in the 90s, as we all love to know today. And then, obviously, into the future, you know what I'm saying? Because I thought after 2004, when Austin and Rock retired, 
got inducted into the Hall of Fame. I thought wrestling was going to be over. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't think that they would have... I, like, I thought that there was no way they was going to recapture that magic that they had in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? Ruthless Aggression era was okay. It wasn't really that bad. And then wrestling started to, you know, go toward the PG era. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then after that, I just stopped watching it, to be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I did watch any wrestling, it would have probably been around in the 80s or in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? On YouTube or, you know, I'd go to the library and, you know, rent, you know, a few, you know, DVDs of it and stuff like that. But other than that, I never, I mean, I literally stopped watching wrestling. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's just not the same. You know, I get, I get it. You know, time evolve. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, everything is not f forever. You know what I'm saying? Like, mankind, mankind, the rock, Stone Cold, they can't all fight forever, right? Uh, not all of them won a lot of titles. You know what I'm saying? Because it was just a juggernaut of, an, of, a, of a roster. You know what I'm saying? You look back at that roster, you had... Top tiers, you had lower tiers, and you had middle tiers. Or you had top tiers, middle tiers, lower tiers, lower tiers, and, you know, the bottom feeders. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure if you did a, a, a top tier list, you know what I'm saying? You know how you, you know, you rank, you know, superstars or whatever. You could do video games. You could do, you know, celebrities. You know, like, like, you rank them from... From from amazing to worse, you know what I'm saying, and you and then basically you just take the whole entire attitude out of a roster, and then you basically you know put them in the category that you think that was fit for them to be. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you had the radicals, you had uh, APA. I mean, I'm saying you had the right to censor. You had too cool. So the attitude era was filled with wrestling, with. With, with great production, not only great production, but just great talent altogether. You know what I'm saying? Like, they had a lot of belts because obviously they had a lot of superstars. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, every single night was, you know, hardcore matches. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, I mean, there was a lot of blood and pay-per-views and stuff like that. So, but in today's generation, is different. You know, I mean... You you rarely see any blood, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I think, you know, Triple H, you know, said the best. When he, when he said that you don't need blood to bring an audience together, you know what I'm saying? Like, what we did back in, the, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing what he said in the interview. Uh, he said that what we did back in the Attitude Era, we had to do it because we was in competition with WCW. You know what I'm saying? And that was the only way to, you know, go over the top was to, you know, press, overpress, or not even over, yeah, overpress or overlap the, the, the company. You know what I'm saying? Because we could have been in that situation where ECW would have taken control and the ratings would have gone up over there. You know what I'm saying? You had, you know, superstars like Kane, The Rock. No, you had superstars like Kane, The Undertaker, Chris Jericho, you know, Big Show leaping from, you know, their, you know, company over to ours, you know what I'm saying? Because they wasn't handling the they wasn't handling them the right way, you know what I'm saying? So we had to, you know, up the notch a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So that's why we had to show a lot of nudity and blood and stuff like that, because we knew that would drive a lot of audiences to us, and then obviously it did, you know what I'm saying? Like, it skyrocketed, you know what I'm saying? And after, the, you know, after the Attitude Era, after, uh, after the Attitude Era ended, came the Ruthless Aggression Era, where you had up-and-coming superstars like, like John Cena, uh, Batista, uh, you know, you you had, you know, height and right, you know what I'm saying? Like, you had all these great superstars that was up in the rise, you know what I'm saying? And then you had still The Undertaker, you had JBL that was, you know, holding the belt, this belt right here for the longest until John Cena beat him at WrestleMania 21. Uh, you know, everybody's saying that, well, if Orlando Jordan didn't, wasn't in ringside, 
JBL would have still been champion. You know what I'm saying? Could be. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously JBL told Orlando Jordan to stay back. You know what I'm saying? He said, I got this. But what if, you know, uh, Orlando Brown was at ringside? You know what I'm saying? Because we all know how JBL won won 60% of his matches was because of Orlando. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, he had the title as long as he could. You know what I'm saying? Like, they put him in triple threat matches, fatal four ways. You know what I'm saying? And then he obviously, you know, you know, came on top. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you had John Cena and Edge feud. You know what I'm saying? You had Randy Orton and Triple H feud. So you had a lot of great storylines. You had Shane McMahon and Kane. You know what I'm saying? You had Triple H and Randy Orton. Uh, you know, you, you had Legacy. And, I mean, you, you just had a lot of, you know, great moments. You know what I'm saying? Um, but now it's just watered down to the point where it's just garbage. It really is. You know what I'm saying? You have superstars now that's now supposed to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, like you have superstars who's been there for like 10 years. You know what I'm saying? That's there. That shouldn't even be there. And then you got a up and coming talent like Amber Moon. Amber Moon should have... I'm not saying that Amber Moon... I'm not saying that Amber Moon should have been pushed. But at least he, she should have got a fair you know, a fair, you know, run, you know what I'm saying, they just booked her, you know, she got hurt, she came back, now I don't even see her no more, you know what I'm saying, and then now I know that she's on team, uh, NXT now, you know what I'm saying, I don't know, she's probably, I don't know, I don't know, I mean, I said that I didn't necessarily watch it, it was like from 2004 all the way through 2009, then I stopped what like that I that was all of my last straw watching it, obviously. You know what I'm saying? Uh so um yeah man. I mean that's just my take on the attitude era, uh versus today's era. Um you know. But you know what? People are still in tune of it. It's crazy how how everything works in mysterious ways, you know, like, it doesn't matter if Stone Cone or The Rock or whoever is not there no more, the wheel keeps on running, you know what I'm saying, like, we had great moments of CM Punk, you know what I'm saying, but, you know, we had great moments of AJ Lee, they're not there no more, but, you know, the wheel just keeps on spinning, you know what I'm saying, like, the WWE find new ways, new ways to, you know, Jolt, jolt the I mean they find new ways to to make the product good again. You know what I'm saying? Even though even though they lost their best you know superstar, they'll find ways to create new ones. You know what I'm saying? Like when they lost Hulk Hogan, everybody thought that res, wrestling was gonna be dead. You know what I'm saying? Ushered in a new era, the attitude era. You had guys like The Rock, Stone Cold, Mankind, Triple H. You had guys like that that just rose up to the occasion and took it to themselves to be the greatest that they can be. You know what I'm saying? You had a lot of great fashions back then. So that's what, you know, a lot of, I mean, that's what it lacks. You know, it's it, it lacks a lot of storylines. You know, the storylines are not good. You know, like... They they ruin a lot of superstars' potential. They ruin Russo. They ru um they're not Russo, they ruined um uh, Shinsuke Nakam Shinsuke Nakamura, they ruined Samoa Joe, they they ruined you know, um what's that big dude's name? Um they ruined um Braun Strowman, you know what I'm saying? They ruined his career, you know what I'm saying? So they ruined a lot of careers over there, you know what I'm saying? Just to make Roman Reigns the head of the table. And, you know, like if you're going to bank all your chips on Roman Reigns, you might just find his predecessor right now. You know what I'm saying? Like you might as well, you might as well just find his, um, his replacement. You know what I'm saying? Because after he's long gone and done with the WWE, 
you know, John Cena don't even come here. I mean, yeah, he might come here and there for like, you know, a brief moment. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, he's a movie star now and, you know, he's all about doing movies. You know what I'm saying? Like, you had The Miz for a short period of time as WWE champion. You had the great, uh, not the great, but you had Daniel Bryan, again, for a brief moment of time against the authorities being the WWE champion, you know what I'm saying? Like, they threw everything at him, and he came back, and, you know, he defined all odds, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like I said, uh, Kofi Kingston had a short run, you know, which I don't think he should have never been champion, but, you know, I guess the WWE got bored and said, okay, yeah, you've been in the company f since, since 2008, you know what I'm saying? You've been climbing, you've been, you know, multiple United States champion, IC title, multiple tag team type champions, you deserve it, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I guess they decided to give him the belt, you know, even though he lost to Brock Lesnar within, what, five seconds, you know? So, I mean, it is what it is. And now they're trying to do the same thing to Big E, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're trying to, you know, shift Big E into that singles competition, you know what I'm saying? Which is the right way because that's how they did it back in the day. You win... What, five matches, you get a title shot. You get a title opportunity. You beat the champion in a non-title match next week or the next pay-per-view, you get a title shot. That's how it should be. But they handing out titles like it's nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're not doing it the proper way. You know what I'm saying? That's how it should always be. You win five matches or probably six. You beat the champion in a non-title match next week. On Friday night, SmackDown, on Monday night, Raw, or the next pay-per-view, you get your opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Like, look how long it took CM Punk to win his first WECW champion. He had to go through a lot. You know what I'm saying? He had to be just incredible. He had to be Balls Mahoney. He had to beat, you know, uh, Tommy Dreamer. He had to beat, you know, uh, Elijah Burke. He had to beat so many people in Fatal Four Ways, Triple Threats. Three to four ways, triple threat, and tri triple threat until he finally got to face John Morrison for the ECW champion. He lost it the first time, got a second chance, and then obviously that's when he won. Same thing with Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley was different, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it is what it is. But you know, I think I just think that the WWE, you know, I mean, it's heading into the right direction. I'm not saying that it's heading into the wrong direction. But the production is not there. You know what I'm saying? The charisma, the, you know, everything that went so well with the Attitude Era isn't resonating with this era whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? The Ruthless Aggression Era was even better than this. You know what I'm saying? Um, the Golden Era was better than this. So what went wrong? I don't know. Maybe it's a lack of superstars. Maybe it was just bad scouting by Triple H because that's his job, you know what I'm saying, um, but whatever it is, it's not, it's not going according to plan, you know what I'm saying, and now you have AEW, which, to be honest with you, I haven't really watched that TV show, you know what I'm saying, like, it was between TNA and Monday Night Raw in WWE, you know what I'm saying, like, I would flip-flop between 2008 and 2009, you know what I'm saying? Especially 2009 when, you know, everything was clicking. clicking. Kurt Angle was champion. Samoa Joe was feuding with Kurt Angle. You had Abyss. I mean, TNA was nothing to mess with. Video games were kind of crappy. I'm not going to lie, but the TV show was great. He had Hulk Hogan running things. So, uh, you know, I mean, you had Cardi Dixie. So, I just think that the WWE right now... Uh, eh, if they're going to save this company, they're going to have to go through extreme measures. Like, I'm telling you. Because right now, WWE is lucky that we are all going through this quarantine. Because I'm telling you, if you're putting this product in the hands of the audience, they're not going to buy it. Some will, some won't. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be seeing when the audience was there. Half of them are on their phones. Half of them be like like this and then look it up. Half of them be doing like this and then look it up. Like, 
If you're going to spend your hard-earned money, watch every single match. I know I would. That's what I did when I went to, you know, I pur- I purchased this on a, on a concession stand. Uh, I think this was back in 2000. And six, yeah, this was back in 2006. So, you know, I mean, I went to Orlando. They was doing the show in Orlando. I went there. You know what I'm saying? Purchased my tickets and I got this. I saw it on like a concession stand. It was only for 10 bucks. Not really. So, I mean, I kept this as long as I could. So, uh, you know, and, you know, my phone was off the whole entire show, you know, from start to finish. You know what I'm saying? And I got to see, you know, The Undertaker and the lights went off. And, you know, it was very magical. But obviously, I didn't have YouTube at the time. So, I mean, it is what it is. But, you know, I mean, as proof, you know, you can't find this nowhere else. You know what I'm saying? I didn't buy it at Walmart, even though they do sell them at Walmart. But I didn't buy it at Walmart. I actually went to a real life show to go see. Um, but anyways, yeah, man. Um, like the WWE, if the WWE wants to save its company, they're gonna have to go through major extreme lengths. Because once this coronavirus is over and everybody go back to their normal lives and everybody can, you know, can, you know, start re-entering, you know, arenas again and stuff like that. If you're still putting on this same product, people are not going to buy it. People are going to think it's trash. You know, just like how y'all forced, you know, Rob Gronkowski down our throat. You know what I'm saying? Him winning the, you know, 24-7 champion, which... I don't even think that championship is not really that bad. I prefer the old school hardcore champion because it looked like a hardcore champion belt. You know what I'm saying? Like this belt looks like it's been carved up and, and, and made to, you know, to impress nobody. You know what I'm saying? At least a hardcore champion had value. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could defend it everywhere, anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, it actually looked like a hardcore champion. The 24-7 champion looked disgusting. It looked like a damn... I'm not even going to go there, but, um, you know, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Even the belts are trash, you know? Yeah, I remember the, the, the 04, 05 belts where one was blue and the other one was red. And then obviously you had the United States champion, and then you had the old United uh, IC champion, and then you had the world, you had the WWE uh, Federation champion. Um, so, I mean, the world heavyweight champion was over there in uh, in WCW. You know what I'm saying? And then you know the whole bit. So, um, yeah, but that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, if you think that the WWE is heading into the right direction. Y'all can let me know in the comment section down below. If the WWE is not heading down the right direction, y'all can also let me know in the comments down below. I will put the video in the description box down below. Like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, take care of yourself and each other.